Hello and welcome once again to Gavit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and you're watching my version of Sculpt January and we're on day number 26 and the topic was ornaments. Uh, well, I did one ornament, I hope that's okay. Uh, actually, I did quite a few in practice, but this is the one I ended up with and I'm pleased with. Uh, so if you want to see a full tutorial on how to do this beautiful ornament, uh, then do check my tutorial in the description. And it's one of my more recent videos, if you're watching this. That doesn't make sense. Scrub that. Just uh, look in the description. Anyway, uh, so I'm using the radial tool again, and it's good fun. I just really wanted to have a good go at that, so I did a few attempts, and I thought I'd do a complete tutorial on it as well. I found the best way to do it is to uh, start with low detail, as always. Uh, get your basic shape. Then, if you can, do a detailed flood fill. And... I suppose uh, that's there's probably a, a mid-level of detail which would be a good idea to go to. So do a detailed flood fill with a sort of uh, medium resolution, uh, so that it, because it can be quite laggy. Because if you're uh, repeating the uh, or doing a radial symmetry of 32 as the number, then uh, it's going to be quite uh, taxing on your computer. Uh, so uh, go for um, the dying topper you want to go uh, as little as possible and then turn it off with a detailed flood fill as soon as you want to go to that detailed level. So like I say, three detailed levels. So the first one, have it on a very low resolution, then up the resolution. In my tutorial, I probably up the resolution a bit too quickly. So it's probably worth uh, doing a second level of detail uh, if you want any sort of um, sticky outy bits um, with your ornament, which I do in a second. You do need a, it. Well, it's interesting actually. There was a slight glitch when I was doing that, uh, and it wasn't copying all the way across my mesh. And I'm assuming that's because Dyn Topo is adding resolution, adding adding resolution, adding faces, and it's not necessarily uh, symmetrically adding shape um, faces. Uh, so the the uh, symmetry went slightly out. So there was one area where it just seems slightly out. But it's also, which I like to do, is vary the um, the amount of uh, radial symmetry. So I've had started with 32, and then I put it down to six just to try out some different shapes because it can look very generic otherwise. Um, and it may have been then that uh, my symmetry went out slightly. So you can see here I'm pulling it out, but in a couple of places it's not pulling out fully. Um, it may have also been the, the resolution I was using. So when I upped the resolution, it was better, um, but it still wasn't quite working. So I just went to the draw brush and added some uh, topology that way. And in fact, I didn't really like the details that were coming out anyway, so uh, I don't think they added much. Uh, so I've gone to six uh, in terms of the radial symmetry number here, and I thought I'd go for some really deep crevices. I'm experimenting a bit more with uh, the brush settings. It's something I haven't often done, which is pretty ludicrous really, because I've been sculpting a fair bit of time now, and uh, I don't tend to change uh, my strength of the brush much. I've changed the curve every now and again, but uh, I really should learn to change the strength more because I end up going over strokes a couple of times and I think, well, I should have just doubled the strength. Uh, that would have made sense, made it a lot quicker, and you get a bit, um, sort of more even, crisp line. Uh, so uh, I'm experimenting more with that, and I could, should, um, I would recommend uh, doing that to anybody out there as well. And so experiment with the strength. I never realised you could go above one either. So on the pinch brush, I keep saying this about uh, Master Zeons. Uh, it's such a funny name. So uh, Master Zeon. I always feel a bit weird when I'm saying his name. Uh, obviously, it's not his. Well, I'm assuming that's not his real name, uh, but it just seems a strange name to call someone. Uh, so Master Zeon's tutorials where he went to 1.5 on his pinch brush. Pinch brush. Uh, and I thought, what? Where did that come from? And it did an amazing job as well. And uh, auto smooth as well, turning that on. I find it a bit laggy, but um, it can be really useful as well, especially if you're using a mouse, I imagine. Uh, auto smooth could be very handy indeed. So working with them. And there's a new feature that someone was telling me that's been introduced, which is rake topology. Uh, and I think that's somewhere in the brush settings as well. And that will actually push your topology in the direction of your brush. And that can be quite nice as well if you're doing something like a pinch or some details. Um, or if you're, well, I'm, I speak, I'm assuming it's only in Dyn Topper at the moment, uh, but I don't know. So I, I've got to experiment with that as well. But uh, yes, 
uh, playing with your brush settings, I think that's uh, an essential thing really. Uh, anyway, uh, on with the sculpt. I thought with this section, uh, I'd add a bit more, um, uh, no, well, not patterny detail. What am I trying to say? Uh, I'm trying to do sort of people as if they're um, surrounding the shape and they're just sort of very loosely people, uh, but you can sort of see roughly uh, what I'm doing there. So uh, maybe it's a crown at the top and there are people sort of worshiping this king or something. Uh, to give it a bit more of a story uh, to the vase um, rather, or the ornament or whatever you might call this thing, rather than just squiggles, uh, squiggles and blobs. Uh, so, um, I, did a tiny bit of sketching here and uh, I turned it down to 12 at this point because I thought that um, number uh, suited it slightly more. Uh, yep, I think we're doing all right here. <laughs> I'm sort of running out of things to say really because I've already done a tutorial on this and uh, I'm gonna get sort of rambly now. I can feel it coming, this sort of ramble. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm using the flatten brush a bit there as well. I'm finding the flatten brush can help uh, with the strength turned up and the uh, smooth, the sort of auto smooth turned on. And that actually isn't too bad. I haven't really found flattened brushes to be that great in the past, but again, looking at Master Zeon's uh, tutorial, um, he was using the flattened brush and he was getting good results. And I thought, do you know, I need to get back to that. Uh, it's really great when you do look at other people's um, use of the tools like Blender, uh, because it just suddenly makes you think, oh, so that brush can do that as well, get it? Uh, and that's really nice. So it's good to watch, even just speed sculpts. Uh, it's better with 2.8 to watch a speed sculpt because you can see the brush they clicked on down on the left-hand side, so that's quite nice. Um, what I should remember to do is put out two uh, panels on the right-hand side as well, so you can see the top of the brush and the bottom of the brush. I quite like that, that you can sort of have them next to each other and it's quite easy to see them. Uh, so uh, they've done well with the sort of interface, I think. Uh, it looks quite nice. Uh, so um, the main thing, of course, is turning Dyn Topo uh, on and off and when to do that. Uh, and that was the sort of tricky part to this. But you don't have to go majorly detailed. If you see some of those sort of lumpy creases in there, remember you've got smooth uh, shading uh, to go to later on. So you, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, which uh, it, it isn't in this case, but it still came out all right once smooth shading was turned on. So I always leave flat shading on with Dyntopo anyway, uh, because I like to see uh, the, where the sort of topology is going and how detailed it is. Anyway, there, there's the final piece. Um, I put a wood shader on it in the end, and that's just a basic PBR uh, with a cavity and ambient occlusion uh, map in there as well. This is rendered in uh, Eevee. Uh, so, um, uh, if, in fact, it was just the ambient occlusion that I was using there. Anyway, uh, back to the uh, Discord server. There's an Oblix there. Uh, this is sort of for fat, the day, um, which is a couple of days ago now, I think, isn't it? Uh, so I'm just a bit behind on showing some of these. But some really lovely work again, as always. Uh, really nice uh, bat, bat, Batman, uh, looking good. Uh, some crazy, insane stuff there. Uh, healing, uh, nice job there. Uh, I, I like this the cigarette that was quite good as well wasn't it a good one for nice nicely textured this one uh, I like that and just quite a fun look to it hasn't it uh, there's one from roof and stent good fun there as well that's mr. M I think as well isn't it uh, Makaguchi and this one so that must be split uh, so I like the way he did the um, the sort of chain the um, whatever that is the scary spider that freaks me out looking at that actually I'm a bit sort of um, arachnophobic uh, nice one there for healing, uh, excellent ideas and ornamental we're on to, so uh, good work. I think my favourite is the, my favourite and my least favourite is the spider, so uh, really well done to design and copy I think it was. So there we have it, uh, thanks for watching and uh, I will see you next time.